Hello everybody and welcome to our next People, Planet and Partners update um, and this time in video form. Um, thank you for, for tuning in. As you can probably notice on a monthly basis, uh, Lucy does a great newsletter that talks around our sustainability goals and how we as a business are driving that forward. And um, today's a little bit of a special one. Uh, like I said, we're doing it on video. Uh, but today with me today, we have Lucy, who's our head of ESG, Paralympian Mel Nichols. Thank you so much for joining Mel, more importantly, uh, for our conversation today. Now, before I introduce you both, and you guys can sort of tell you who you are and what you do, um, I want to sort of set the scene about this conversation today. So if you haven't noticed before, last month's uh, newsletter was all around the social side of sustainability and uh, where Lucy gives us the, the goals, where we want to go. And the most effective way on how we can deliver positive social value is by oh, identifying the opportunities to reduce, reduce inequality through our partnerships and to give our partners the equal access to these opportunities. And uh, one way of doing this as a business is um, doing this via a sponsorship partnership with, with, you know, with, with, athlete, with, with Athlete Mel. And um, we want to really sort of find out a bit more about your story, where you come from, and Lucy to find out where we're going in terms of the business. And um, so before we go into the introductions, actually, no, let's go into the introduction. So Lucy, we all know who you are, but we'd love you to, for people who haven't seen this, this is the first piece of content they've seen from Paragon. Please introduce who you are and then Mel, likewise. Thanks, John. Yeah, I'm Lucy Klinkenberg. I'm head of uh, ESG for Paragon Customer Communications. So I have overall responsibility for the thought leadership and the strategy around that environmental, social and governance frameworks. Um, so, you know, the, the social part of sustainability, we started to talk about a lot more. Um, things like climate change, political instability, social inequalities affect minorities and the poorest in our societies, societies disproportionately. So I think as a business, it's really hard to know how to tackle these global issues. Um, but, you know, one of the things we can do is identify the opportunities, the opportunities in our own operations, you know, such as our diversity and inclusion forum, our reverse mentoring schemes, but also working um, with partners. So that might be um, uh, to, to bring our supply partners into this through partnerships with MSD UK, but also partners, um, individual partners such as Mel as well. I think that's a, a lovely segue into Mel's introduction. <laughs> Thank you very much. So I'm Mel Nichols. I'm a two-time Paralympian in athletics in wheelchair racing. Um, I'm also an ultra cyclist, so I'm a hand cyclist. I'm a GB triathlete. I guess I can call myself that now. Um, a multiple world record holder across athletics and ultra cycling. Um, and I'm on a bit of a mission to help champion diversity across sport, across business, um, and to help create positive change. Um, I like to think of myself a bit of a, a pursuer of possibility. Well, that's an introduction. That's amazing. Um, so we're just stealing that pursuer of possibility. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love that. Fantastic. Um, I was going to go in straight into this then, and, and discovering the importance towards ongoing social values. And, and there, Lucy, in your introduction, you, you touched on, on a bit of it. Um, so it's really important if you can set the scene, please, to sort of talk us through the importance of this social values and why we're championing it, and and, and why we're working closely with someone like Mel. Yeah, I think, you know, as as a business, it's really important that we understand the diversity that we have within our workforce. And that's that's something that we're working hard to understand. Um, it's important that everybody has equal access, access to opportunity. Um, and it's recognising that, um, you know, some parts of society, people with minorities, um, needs additional help to access that opportunity as well. So whether that's through, you know, our own activities about how we bring people into the workforce through our apprentice programmes and partnerships in that area, or whether it's around these individual partnerships, um, such as, as the one we have with Mel now as well. Um, it's all about providing that equal access to opportunities, whether it's for individuals, whether it's for businesses, um but that's that's the ethos behind it great thank you now well just to set the scene you know tell us about yourself and, and your background and how you've come to where you are today It'd be really interesting to hear uh, so back in oh when would it have been 2008 um i had my uh, last of a series of strokes so before that able-bodied um i was i was into sport but um 
not to maybe particular sort of competitive sport as I am now. Um, basically, uh, I, I've always loved being active. I've always loved, I've always been someone very focused, having a goal, no matter what that is. Um, so coming out of, uh, of illness of my recovery, I just, at the time, I, I didn't know how long it would take for me to get better um, or how better I would get. But I kind of just found every opportunity I could to make the most of what I had then. So that was kind of my focus at the time. It's like, well, I'm not going to wait. I'm not just going to sit around. I'm just going to, you know, make the most of me now. Um, that obviously then continued into into para sport and um, tried a, a, quite a few para sports um, and ended up sort of focusing on athletics. Um, 15 months after taking up wheelchair racing, I was selected for my uh, my first time representing GB, which was at London 2012 Paralympic Games. So it was a, a bit of a, a whirlwind for sure. Um, I could say that I kind of didn't see it coming, but at the same time, when I knew there was a very small chance, I just gave it absolutely everything. My, my motto is dream big. And from the beginning, it was, this is my focus. We are going to do everything we can to get to London. It was still a shock when I got selected, but it was uh, it was fantastic. So that was the start of my sporting career. Um, I've been lucky to represent GB with athletics through London and then on to Rio um, and then leaving the athletics track uh, to focus on more longer distance um wheelchair racing so marathons and then moving into cycling so I'm, I'm definitely um I love long distance uh the ultra cycling has kind of come since then so I uh broke the world record for cycling lands in John O'Groats back in 2019 uh cycled around the coast of Britain last year and supported for another world record um been over to America this year doing some 24-hour world records and cycling again uh so the the adventure um the adventure sort of mix with performance is kind of where i love i'm still trying to find where that meets in the middle yet but um it's it's exciting exploring that i was gonna say i'd read on um, your website some of the adventures that you've been on and uh where, where does that sense of adventure come from do you think well i i, I think i've always had it um people often say to me you know if you hadn't had your strokes do you think you'd be doing what you do now and and no i don't think i'd have been at the olympics um but i think i i've always had that that drive and and that uh that adventure mindset maybe um and even when i was a, a kid then i'd be going out and exploring and sort of just going off adventures with my friends um i remember when i was uh, when i was in hospital my dad actually told me a story of a, a sort of distant ancestor um that uh, he basically got lost at sea sort of on his way through the um uh the antarctic and that kind of was definitely a little spark in me that's like oh that's you know that's kind of cool so maybe it's in the gene somewhere i don't know <laughs> like i think. want to get lost in the antarctic yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not lost yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he points here so uh, between both of you i'm keen to hear your thoughts on you know what's the most effective way that we can start delivering this positive social value and how we take these forward and, you know, discussions between you how would you how would you approach it well I, I mean I very much think you know any kind of positive change you, you people have to see it we have to see it so how are people going to see it and for people to see it you have to be it don't you so it's about yeah doing it it's not just talking the talk it's walking the walk it's being authentic and doing that doing it in a holistic way um being as like being authentic about it um don't try and force it don't just say these are the words or this is what we're doing um you know bring it in a in a holistic way and then show it you know showcase it champion it celebrate it um it's part of what you do and and set a, a lead by example isn't it i think what do you think yeah i i agree and i think in the workplace as well you know is it is about changing mindsets it's about changing business culture and that doesn't happen overnight that takes time and i think you know having having positive role models there or having diversity represented in our workforce is really important i think like like you say you have to you have to be able to see that you have to be the change mm -hmm. um that that we need to see in the world i think it was gandhi who said that yeah no, I'm not gonna, not gonna not gonna steal those words um and you know I think as a business we we have quite a long way to go you know both in terms of measurement of our workforce and you know diversity and representation particularly in senior le senior levels of management for example as well and uh, you know I think as a business it's about being transparent um about where we are in this journey um, as well as highlighting, you know, the, the positive programmes that we've got in place as well. 
that's quite interesting when you talk about the programs um, and the power representation. Like Mel, you, you highlighted that earlier. So, so let's talk about the power of this and the power of representation to inspire others to break down barriers is one of the points I've got to talk about. Um, I want to talk about, I want to delve into that with you, first of all, Mel, and find out, you know, the power behind this to inspire people. And Lucy, let's talk about how Mel's inspiration and, and drive and, and career so far has maybe helped us in terms of our internal efforts, including like the Inclusion Council and some of the strategies that you have. So Mel, we'd love to hear some of your thoughts towards how representation is, is there to inspire the future generation of athletes, more importantly. It's like we were just saying, you know, people need to see it, so you need to be it. So it's being the, the best role model that you can be. It's it's uh, and we don't always get things right, and that's fine, but you know, own up to that. And I think it's important that people call you out on that and equally, you know, you call other people out. Um, because very often you know, it's not intentional, but um to be better, to, you know, we we need to have that uh, positive um I can't think of the words, but you know, the feedback and say <laughs> you can cut that bit. <laughs> we need to uh yeah, to know kind of maybe where we're not quite getting things right and to to move forward from that so um yeah i think that's yeah what do you think lucy in terms of how that is powered and how does that drive our internal efforts here at paragon well i i think it's very i think you know i think it doesn't matter whether you're in business or sport or you know any any other area acting whatever i think it's seeing that represent you know that representation there and then until we start tackling it as a business as society um then you know it's it, then nothing changes until we until we start tackling that and how do you start tackling that you know one conversation at a time one podcast at a time um and, and just having having those open and honest conversations about the difficulties and like and like Mel said you know we're not going to get it right all the time as a business and we need people to speak up and tell us when we're not getting it right so that we can we can recognize that and do something about it as well um, but I think you know communication collaboration is is totally key in how we tackle these challenges. Mm. Yeah, well, but when we talk about um, changes and challenges so we're talking about the challenges but I bet till this date we've seen some really positive changes in how people have addressed uh, sport as well as some of the social side of our sustainability drive. Mel, this is a question for you, really. What have you seen in your career to date, sort of the positive changes in society and, and your hopes for the future of Paralympic sport and inclusivity in general, really? I mean, I didn't before I was in the world of para sport. I didn't know that much about it. Um, I think you know, unless you are in that, and that's what we we're saying about people don't always get maybe terminology right or, or you know uh, um, attitudes because they just aren't seeing it. They don't know it, and there's a lot more of that about now. Um, I think particular London, you know, was a huge change, and they say you know, the London 2012 legacy, and I do think it's still really big. I think it's made such a difference. To, to have, um, I know Channel 4 kind of covered London and obviously every Paralympic game since, but they did such an incredible job um, to showcase athletes as elite athletes. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't about their disability, their impairments. I mean, of course, to an extent it was, but that's, it was about sport. It was about athletes delivering the best, you know, that those gold medal winning moments. And, you know, it sets up, um, I think just people to to see that and to uh, to aspire to that. You know, I, I've um, raced with girls that watched London 2012 and watched me and my competitors race and then have come through and now they're winning the world medals and those sort of stories there's so many of those I mean I watched Beijing uh, when I was in hospital because it happened to be on and that was the first time I knew about para sport I mean at the time I didn't know um, if or how how much I'd get better but that was almost you know well okay I can't do anything too much now but look at these guys there's stuff I can do so it's just sort of planting those seeds so I think in uh, in sport, you know, it's it's been great and it's brought out it's brought out new world champions. Um, and I think in just general, um, you know, I'll I'll train out every day on my bike or my race chair, and the the youngsters from the local school, you know, often get oh that's sick that is, which apparently means it's really cool. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> um, and and they're brilliant actually. The youngsters, their attitudes are fantastic. You know, I'll be in a supermarket in my wheelchair, and you hear a little boy saying oh why is that lady in a wheelchair or something, and I'll have a conversation with them, and they they're asking these questions which is brilliant you know that's what you want um I think it's maybe sort of older generations that are a bit stuck but I think the youngsters are actually teaching them and saying you know it's okay we can we can talk we can we can look it's fine you know we don't have to, okay hide to ask yeah yeah, 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 yeah definitely. And I think that's wonderful 
Yeah, absolutely. I, and I think having that challenge and you say that like the younger generation are asking questions, but in a positive light. And but you said there might be a might be a, a few uphill struggles in terms of the older generation. So how have you come across, Mel, in terms of ignorance and prejudice towards disabled people? I mean, I, I think I'm quite lucky. I haven't. I Maybe um, maybe it's the way I see things. I don't know. I mean, I always kind of any whether it's any um, a bit of negativity when I'm riding my bike on the road or whatever it is or people's attitudes. I just I just give them a lot of positivity and smiles back again. So <laughs> um, I think a lot of it, you know, it depends whether it's intentional or not. And a lot of it isn't. I think um, it's it's just not understanding. So, again, the more that's out there and since London 2012, again, there's been you know a lot of diversity on mainstream TV, which, you know, obviously everybody is most people are watching TV. So just normalizing it because obviously we're all human. We're all different. We're all the same. Um, so that's I think is really really good um, and and just education um, so if uh, whatever it is if there's something that I overhear in the street or something said to me then I'll stop and I'll have a conversation you know in a very positive way and I say well why do you think that and and, and then sort of counterbalance what happens if or something like that and just get people to think about it and have those conversations with me and then maybe with themselves and then maybe they'll go home and have them with someone else um, so I think it's yeah just kind of um, helping people to understand a bit more really is gonna is gonna make a big difference. And as we say, you know, youngsters they are coming coming through and and seeing that more as the norm, as mainstream, you know, in the TV or or whatever in yeah everywhere, which is great. Right. Um, the mindset is a big thing, like you said, where you just sort of have a really positive outlook and and you sort of just let it drift over you at times with smiles and love, and that's a that's a wonderful approach to take. And um, now we're talking about the sporting mindset. Now, forgive me, I'm not I'm not one to know this, but I know this is, you know, how can it help you sometimes help you sort of take on the challenges of day to day life? You know, your your drive, your your, your goals are what you want to achieve. How does that support you in your day to day life as well? Yeah, the sporting mindset. I mean, I think um, a healthy sporting mindset is obviously fantastic for sport and also for everyday life. I think, yes, it could perhaps work the other way, you know, an unhealthy sporting mindset. But whether it's a sporting mindset or just a mindset, um, it's kind of, uh, you know, maybe sporting mindset. You could think, well, you're out there to win all the time. You want to be the best. You want to be a perfectionist. It's got to be right every time. Um, but you could see how that potentially could could maybe could be quite damaging when it comes to to life to business and all that sort of thing um I think you've you've got to accept you know that we're all human and we've all have flaws and we all have bad days and we have good days um sort of uh I think yeah if I sort of look back to um Professor Steve Peters the chimp paradox um you know great great book about having this sort of chimp in our in our brains and it's the chimp that in maybe sport that, that suddenly appears. I know where I'm in a race. I've got like two little voices going on and there's one saying, ah, you've lost this. You know, you're tired. You, you're doing no good. And the other one's sort of, sort of having a bit of an argument saying, no, 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 shut up. We've got this. <laughs> um, and it's kind of not ignoring the chimp, you know, feed it some bananas and say, accept it, accept that you're tired, accept maybe that things aren't going to plan. But what are we going to do about it? Turning it round. So, you know, we can't be perfect all the time. We can't be perfect every day and, and have those gold medal moments, you know, every single time. Um, but I think any, whether it's a barrier, whether it's a challenge, whether it's uh, um, adversity, whatever it is you're facing, then you can you can turn that into resilience and you can fuel that pathway to, to possibility. So I think well, no matter where you are, no matter maybe how things aren't going to plan, um, you know, you've got that power to switch that around. And that's that's the sporting, the positive sporting mindset I think we can all use. Brilliant. Thank you for explaining that. That's that's, that's really good. Yeah, um, no, that's that's yeah. Inter That's really interesting to hear, and I think that's such kind of good ethos for life in general. I think you know, you because yeah, everyone's of course goes through ups and downs in life, but it's yeah, it's about finding the good things and how do you turn that around. And I think it's probably something we could all learn from a sporting mindset. I think yeah. And success isn't linear, is it? No matter what no. success is, we know it's not. So you can't expect it to be that upward trend the whole time. Mm. Great. Yeah, absolutely. I, th I yeah. think, you know, draw parallels to this. And, you know, somebody asked asked me, you know, um, how are we going to how are we going to get to net zero? You know, when we've got these problems with rushing gas and everything I said, Well, it's not going to be linear. You know, there's going to be there's going to be some bumps in that that decrease in carbon emissions as the world reacts to global events and um, 
again, I think it's sort of another metaphor for life, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Look at the big picture. You know, ride the bumps, yeah. bumps <laughs> turn them, turn them into a positive. Absolutely. Nothing worth having isn't. You know, you you got to you got to have your ups and downs, and you got to fight for it, haven't you? And um, eventually, it will happen if you have that positive mindset and, and just push forward. So. Uh, yeah, and that sort of ties it all together, really, of what we talked about is that positive approach and, and education and, and and getting people to sort of fit into the sort of the same mindset that everyone else has and allowing that inclusion approach. Now, sort of just to tie everything off and to sort of close everything down to this conversation is, you know, what's next in terms of the um, of, of, of you both? And Lucy, I'll let you, you start off and uh, t- talk us through what's next and what we're doing closely with Mel and what's next, what we're doing here at Paragon in terms of educating internally and our colleagues across the business. Yeah, and I think what's next with Mel is uh, Mel's going to hopefully kind of uh, dial into a few of our diversity and inclusion council forums. uh, And it's going to be really exciting for that team to meet Mel and hear a story and hear the determination in that as well, because, you know, when you're when you're. um, you know when you're developing these programs in work as well you know we all need some of that determination i think in in order to uh into to tackle the uh, the massive challenges that we've got ahead of us um what's next for the business um we're very much in a period of kind of measurement and benchmarking um it's as i said earlier it's really important that we Um, benchmark and baseline what diversity and inclusion looks like in our workforce. Uh, We don't have a clear picture of that yet. Um, And until we've got those measurements, we can't see the areas of the business where we need to improve. And more importantly, we can't measure the success of some of the programmes that the uh, Diversity and Inclusion Forum have have implemented, you know, like our reverse mentoring scheme and the Diversity Me podcasts. Um, So, you know, until we've got that measurement, it's very hard to set targets and measure our improvement as well. So that's the big focus for our business for the forthcoming months. Great. And Mel, with yourself, what's your ambitions for the next 12 months, two years, three years? Uh, what, what's next for yourself? Uh, you've just come off uh, another oh, competition next month. where you can go. Yeah. Next month, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, what's new for you and what's your plans? I mean, firstly, you know, say I'm really looking forward, really excited to, to working with you all, to working with Paragon and to to getting involved in the, the diversity and inclusion work. That's fantastic. Um, and, you know, I want to be doing more of, of what I've sort of can use from sport to bring into business. So that's really important. That's going to move the world forwards, isn't it, where we want it to be. So thank you for um, inviting me and allowing me to, to be part of that. Um, with 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 my sport, I guess. Yeah, I've just returned last night from um, from competing away in Italy, um, which was successful thankfully so uh, next month I go away again I think to Turkey um, so taking almost uh, a few weeks at a time um, with triathlon for me it's kind of come around very quickly this year um, yeah another whirlwind another world so uh, I'm just riding that uh, that wave at the moment quite literally <laughs> um, potentially me looking at you know there may be possible of uh, another game so I wasn't at Tokyo because I'd sort of moved away from Paralympic sport and I was doing my ultra cycling um, but maybe maybe Paris is a possibility you know we believe in the possible so certainly going to be working towards that um also sort of still going along with the ultra cycling stuff as well so I think yeah sport is full on at the moment and um, which is fantastic um after having the the world kind of closed for a couple of years it's great and you've just got to take those opportunities and just you know work hard and do everything you can while you can um and hopefully I'm doing some positive positive work with it as well and inspiring the next generation and whatever else um and using those skills continuing to use those skills to work through business but also in you know champion diversity and inclusion and setting those standards uh for the future um just you know trying to get more women and get more uh, get some disability into ultra cycling which is um you know it's predominantly male uh, dominated um and you know there's not really the disability sort of side of that in ultra cycling so saying well why not you know why can't somebody race a thousand miles on, on sport you know find ways of doing that so it might be uh, i'm working with organizations um maybe adapting routes or maybe uh, the support side of things but it's all possible so it's just getting people to to open their minds a little bit not sort of um, because they don't know that they may be a bit fearful and just saying no flat out straight away it's like well why you know what is so working with them so that's really exciting times as well great that sounds like an interesting few months at least as well Amazing. yeah <laughs> i wish you all the best in turkey i really do Thank and look you. Thank you for everyone for watching this and thank you both for your time to talk about this, uh, some of the exciting projects we have together in terms of social. And um, 
for everyone watching, uh, please remember to subscribe to the newsletter. It's on LinkedIn every month, uh, the People, Planet and Partners newsletter, which is hosted by Lucy. And I'm sure this is the only the first of many things to come of all the communications and content we're going to work with Mel on. And I'm sure the next update, I'm sure Lucy will have a great update in terms of where we are in inclusion councils and some of the stuff there as well. So yet again, thank you for everyone for watching and thank you to Mel and Lucy for joining us. And um, we'll catch you again on the next episode of People, Planet and Partners. Thank you very much. <laughs>